Hi folks, in this unit what we were talking about was the link between the brain and the gut microbiome and in particular how this can affect different mental health states which is kind of wild to think about. So this is a relatively new hypothesis uh, that we're talking about here and certainly when I was an undergrad this wasn't something that was even considered. So what am I showing you here? This is basically a summary of how uh, researchers think this pathway could work or how different aspects of stress and the gut microbiome could affect one's mental health. So what I'm showing here, first of all, this is looking at our gut epithelium, okay? So remember with an epithelium, that's really serving a barrier function, right? And that you shouldn't have things pass through, you know, in between cells. We don't want that to happen. Usually we have mechanisms whereby something has to go through the cell. Then what we're looking at is we have some immune cells down here. And then we're going to be talking about the central nervous system here. This is uh, kind of like a side view of a person. Yes, not the best thing ever. And this is their brain here. Okay, that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's think about what happens when you are stressed. Okay, if you've taken other physiology courses, you probably recognize that one of the most common things that's going to happen is you're going to get the activation of your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, right? So the hypothalamus is going to signal to the pituitary gland, which is going to signal to the adrenal gland. And one of those things that are released from the adrenal gland is cortisol, okay? So what that stress is doing is it's causing the release of cortisol into the blood. So cortisol is a hormone, it's going to travel throughout the blood, and it's going to affect all sorts of different systems within the blood. Now, because of this, what it's going to do is that this cortisol, because it is flowing throughout the body, is going to have effects on this epithelium. So what they think that happens here with this cortisol is with increased amounts of stress, that's going to disrupt this barrier function of the epithelium. So remember how I said we shouldn't have things that can pass through. Well, what we're looking at here is here's the interior part of our gut. Here is our epithelium. And these friendly little guys here, this is some of our gut microbiome, right? Some of the microbiota within our gut. Now we can have those that are symbiotic, which basically help um, maintain normal processes. We have those that are commensal that aren't really good or bad, but they're just kind of always hanging out in our gut. And then we can have those that can be um, pathobionts or be more pathogenic. What can happen with this stress and again, causing the release of cortisol, acting on this epithelium, is that it's going to make this epithelial layer a little bit more leaky. So what that means is that some aspects of this bacteria, so some of their products, for example, could sneak through. When we're thinking about pathobionts, or the ones that aren't really supporting any kind of positive function within our body, what we're talking about is endotoxins, okay? You can look at the toxin part, you know that this is not something that we want to have in our blood. With these endotoxins, what this can do is then stimulate our immune cells. So what I've shown here within our blood vessels, okay, is we are going to have our immune cells. So we have a T cell, and this is a macrophage here. And essentially what those endotoxins are going to do is going to stimulate these immune cells and these immune cells are going to cause an inflammatory response, okay? So we've talked at length about inflammation before, so we know that this is going to cause upregulation of some of those inflammatory cytokines. Some of those inflammatory cytokines are gonna be able to get into our blood. And ultimately what happens with this inflammation is that it can travel back up into the brain. Now the challenging part here is with that inflammation traveling back up into the brain, and by inflammation I mean some of those different chemical mediators, what can happen is that this can activate a stress response within the brain. Now within the brain we don't have our usual T cells and macrophages. Rather what we have for immune cells are microglia. And microglia are a lot like macrophage. I mean, I kind of tried to draw them sort of the same. You can see that there. So the microglia respond a similar way to those macrophages. But now, if they're being activated in the brain, they're going to do their own inflammatory response. But the problem with this is that inflammation in the brain is not good. 
And what can happen is that this can disrupt some of the normal signaling pathways that help maintain a healthy mental state. So it's thought that essentially this stress, when we're experiencing it, and there's all sorts of different types of stressors, is going to activate this HPA axis. We're going to get the release of cortisol. That cortisol is going to flow throughout the blood. And eventually what it can do is it can work on our gut epithelium. Here in the gut epithelium, what that cortisol does is actually loosen these connections between our epithelium. And that allows bacteria that, you know, might not be harmful or are in relatively small amounts within our gut to have some aspects of them, such as their endotoxins, leak through. When those endotoxins leak through, they are detected by macrophages or T cells. They could be identified as PAMPs, pathogen associated molecular patterns, for example. And what that's going to do is it's going to activate inflammation. That inflammation is going to be producing all sorts of vascular changes, upregulation of cytokines. Those cytokines can travel up into our central nervous system where they can activate the o their own um, types of immune cells within the brain, the microglia, to cause inflammation. This inflammation within the brain then is thought to disrupt some aspects of normal mental health functioning. So if we think about that in terms of depression or anxiety, perhaps one way that it could do this would be disrupting serotonin signaling, for example. So this is kind of a big picture of how we think currently, or the, the field currently thinks about how stress and the gut microbiome can work together to unfortunately cause stuff like depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues.